Good evening. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler blog. The Third Heaven Traveler blog is about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and him in us. Those of us who believe on him and how we apply this existence to our daily lives. The gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. If we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, according to scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, we are saved. Time is short. We are at the last seconds of this age. Dear Lord, I pray that eyes could be opened from this teaching. I pray that this teaching, Lord, be given to you for your glory in your most precious loving name even so come lord jesus amen maranatha saint dear saint listen to me we must strive lawfully in this israel palestine affair one of my dear subscribers sister in christ brought a teaching to my attention and i want to go through that uh, the teaching here first let's get in the word and go to second timothy chapter 2 verse 4 no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier and this goes with verse 5 and if a man also strive for masteries yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully we saints will rule with Christ. We literally will rule with him and be crowned. We'll be rewarded. When we are raptured, we'll go to the beam of judgment and we will get our rewards. What we do wrong, that's not striving lawfully, not in accordance with doctrine, his word, we, our works will be burned to stubble. Now, I'm not going to take the time to go through uh, our awards with crowns, uh, with how we saints rule with Christ. These are in my studies. Email me if you need more information. But this is important. How we deal with day-to-day -day activities, especially this very volatile situation happening in the Middle East, is how we're going to be rewarded in heaven. If you don't, think so or you don't want to listen to this bye as i always say don't let the door hit you in your butt on your way out goodbye for those of you who want to learn there's the video i have it in the link here this is the hyperlink and uh thank you my dear sister for some for submitting this and the title is Palestine, uh, correction, Israel versus Palestine, anti-Semitic versus anti-truth. Now, this video, it's uh, about 45 minutes, is by this Independence Baptist Church Pastor Adams. I have the full transcript in the notes below. Now, the centerpiece to Adams' diatribe is the illegitimate actions of the state of Israel since 1948 and their apartheid, non-democratic treatment of the Palestinian people. Now, a diatribe is a forceful, bitter, verbal attack against someone or something. I chose this word on purpose. And then for those of you who do not know what apartheid is, it's a policy of segregation and discrimination on the grounds of race, creed, or something of that nature. Now, listen, geopolitically speaking, Adam's presentation is absolutely true, no doubt. It's well done, actually, his work. From the perspective of a people occupying a land, that was already occupied by mostly Arabs classified as Palestinians. Now, I can't make this clear. For you Zionists or evangelical Christian Zionists, for you uh, out there Christians who worship Israel, the nation of Israel, uh, this is a good wake-up call for you, and I'm glad this pastor put this out. 
Now, there's also big problems with what he's saying, and we're going to talk about that. Now, note, there are some others out there. This Chuck Baldwin of Liberty Fellowship in Montana, that boy is leading a cult straight to the Antichrist. Now, now listen, at the same time, Chuck Baldwin has absolute awesome unmatched research in how evil the Zionist agenda and the regime really is. I mean, make no mistake, people, I'm not an ostrich with my head in the ground. I've traveled extensively. I'm a retired military officer. I've dealt with IDF officers before. I was in the Middle East during the Beirut with before I went submarine warfare. I was a boat officer supporting the 24th Marine Amphibious Unit. Do you think I, we weren't just a little nervous about after what happened to the USS Liberty when 30 some sailors were killed, 130 some other wounded? We don't. Israel is not our true friend, people. Israel is only, I'm talking national, Zionist, non godly. They can't stand Jesus Christ. They don't even want to acknowledge him. They are not this God fearing nation, people. They use God, they use even mention the Bible to keep the evangelical Christians in tow, bring them along as useful idiots. And they have there, and I think that no doubt like this, Amir Tisfati is one of their tools, and he uses evangelicals as useful idiots. Now, this Chuck Baldwin, make no mistake, his research, now I urge you, check into this guy, because the Zionists have infiltrated the United States. Now, when I say Zionists, the Mossad, the Israeli uh, counterintelligence, they're working in very mysterious ways, evil ways, to completely grab and take America into a chokehold. They're, it's evil, and they are evil. Now, there's another one, this Dr. Everett Ramsey, now, he's a Nicolaitan, a false teaching heretic, but he does have good points on Israel. But now I've gone through this to show you they've got good stuff. They present truth, but then they bring in a lot of lies and doctrine of demons with them. So let's talk about Pastor Adams here in his video. I urge you to watch the video. And I want to say, Pastor Adams... Thank you for your thorough political overview. I should say geopolitical overview. But I'm going to say, Pastor, I don't like the term pastor because in the context of the 501c3 brick and mortar operations called churches today run by apostate trained CEOs called pastors, for example, you being a pastor and all the other Baptist, I repeat, Baptist pastors, you make this being a Baptist, you're a follower of the vain philosophy of man and creeds and tradition and not after Christ. Ouch. Yes, it's true. It's true. Baptist creeds. Yes. Read Colossians chapter 2, 8. This is why I don't go to church. 50 years of coming out of religion come out from among them. <clears throat> Let's talk about Jude chapter 1, verse 11. I urge you, I plead with you, take the hour. It will take over an hour, but take the time. Make your notes. Study my, let's talk about Jude 1, 11. Now, as I continue, there are two major issues with Adams' assessment. In his geopolitics, and, and, I, and, you, and hit the link on the description box in this blog if you don't know these terms. You must know terms. His geopolitics, he does not give us the other side of the coin. Yeah, there's two stories, right? And that's the pogrom of Israel's neighbors who want to wipe them off the map. Okay, you don't want to call them Israel, then the so-called Jewish people who migrated in from all over and, and, and do my blog links. A good book I just finished reading from Shlomo Sand, who is a Ph.D., living in Israel, and he has all of the credible details that... I'm more Jew. My Aunt Jenny, a Gentile, is more Jew than most Jews living in Israel right now. They don't even know what they are. But you've got to read my studies on that. It's a joke. 
But call them what you want. These people living in Israel, calling themselves uh, like 75% of their population, they, they're called Jews practicing Judaism, which most of them aren't. They say they are. They got to stamp something on there. But their neighbors truly want to wipe them off the map. Now, if you're not aware of the river to the sea doctrine, I have it in the hyperlink. I'm not going to take the time to show you from the Jordan River going west all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. They want to wipe Israel off the map. Take it back. Now, if you don't know what a pogrom is, it's it's an it's an absolute racial beyond racial attack to destroy and wipe out an ethnic group, as the Jews were in the Russian Empire. It's a form of massacre, persecution. Read it back on. Okay, the current state, or, or the, this, this Adams, he doesn't tell you. He just makes it look like these mean, these mean, bad Jews are in there doing these terrible things to Palestinians. And they are. Oh, make no mistake. That's why I urge you to watch his video. He is right on the money. He nails it. The, you want to talk about apartheid? It's Israel. You want to talk about absolute... They're, they're such... The state of Israel, they're such disgusting, complete hypocrites. They're no more democrat, uh, democracy than communist China. In fact, communist China gives their peons more rights than the Israelis give the Poor Palestinians. Oh, the poor Palestinians. No, it's true. They treat them horribly. But you say, why is that? And they point the finger and say, if we don't build that, encase them in, lock them in the round, in, uh, the wall, and keep them isolated, they'll keep killing our uh, population. Terrorists keep sneaking in. It goes back and forth. But the thing is, there's truly the ideology of much of the Arab world wants Israel wiped off the map. I think you understand that. He doesn't present that side. Now, he also doesn't tell us the truth, this Adams. Folks, like it or not, but the current state of Israel, Israel, they are the legal tenants of that land right now. Now, don't you, listening to me, listening to this video, don't you scream into your at your phone or your laptop or whatever and say, no, they're not tenants. That's their land. No, they're tenants. And if you don't believe it, listen, if you don't want to hear it, buy. Don't let the door hit you under your butt on your way out. Buy. Get lost. But see, the current state of Israel, they're legal tenants there. They have been, like it or not, I'm telling you the truth. They've been granted by obviously a divine intervention to hold our land. Now, our land. What? Yeah. Listen to me. If you're saved, you're true Israel, the church, and then the Jewish remnant that will come out of the tribulation. Their true Israel will join the tribulation saints, the Gentiles that come through that. And then, of course, the Old Testament saints, they will, we will all join at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, this is true Israel. Now, this is when Jesus Christ establishes a 1,500 cubic mile city centered in Jerusalem. And when I say cubic, get your geometry, old books out in geometry. Now, a square mile is two-dimensional, right? That's... Your, that's taking a length times a width. Now, when I go the third dimension cubic, I'm going up. And I think it will be in the shape of a pyramid. 1,500 miles high. And you're probably thinking if you don't read your Bibles and you're rather ignorant in the word of God, but no, it's not. Okay, study that, please. But the current state of Israel, their legal tenants, the United Nations partition plan for Palestine was a proposal of the United Nations, and it, recomm it recommended the partition in mandatory Palestine. And it ended uh, the end of the British mandate. 
So in 29 November 47, the UN General Assembly adopted the plan as Resolution 181. Do your research. Now, on May 14, 1948, in Tel Aviv, the Jewish Agency Agency Chairman uh, David Ben-Gurion, he proclaimed the state of Israel, establishing the first Jewish state in 2,000 years. Now, you can read all the background about it. Read how modern Israel, it has its origins in Zionism and the movement. Yes, these evil Zionists, and they're bad news people, they really are. And the, 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 after the failed Re Russian Revolution 1905, they're involved in that. Uh, these Jews were literally very, very, and Shlomo Sand has it in his book, read it for yourself, very politically involved and very liberal left-wing Marxists. They were bad news and, and are bad news, to be honest with you, to date, to date. But when they came in and established that, man, their, their land, the Arabs were like, no, 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 no. We've been living here for hundreds of years, thousands of years. We're a family and traditions and this was the Ottoman-controlled Palestine, the original home, but that's not yours no more. You lost all these property rights. You've been kicked out. We're the new owners. And it was open battle and fighting, which brought, obviously, the open. This fighting has been going on since the 20s, people. And then this continued through the Second World War when the Jews were going to possess about half of Palestine. But then because the Palestinian Arabs were aided by volunteers of other countries, they fought the Zionist forces. But guess what? And I think we all know as saints, as Christians, that in May 14th, on May 14th, 48, the Jews secured full control of their UN allocated share of Palestine. And that's what's known as today is the state of Israel. But guess what? Egypt, Transjordan, Syria, and Lebanon, and Iraq invaded him. They're like, and we can let this happen. But again, Israel prevailed. And then in 49, a UN brokered ceasefire left the state of Israel in permanent control. Then in 67, just what, 17, uh, let's see, 17 uh, years later, almost 20 years later, right? We had the Six Day War. And Israel, again, greatly increased its borders, as you know. And then they established the Gaza Strip and West Bank go on heights. As you know, the Gaza Strip now is where the Palestinians are. Gaza Strip right there along the coast of the Mediterranean on the west side, that little spot there. West Bank being next between Jordan and Israel, right? And then the Golan Heights up north below Syria and Lebanon. But... Where we are today, well, also look, so so it, it belongs to them. No, it doesn't. It's not fair. Now, legally, it belongs to them, and God was involved in that. Now, whether you like Israel, hate Israel, love Palestinians, hate the Palestinians, it doesn't matter. I'm speaking facts. Let's stay facts here. And you also have to realize as much as the Palestinians suffer under the Israelis, and they do, it is horrific. It's nothing short of genocide. What's happening right now in Gaza is nothing short of genocide. I'm talking about the innocent Palestinians, not Hamas. But see, people also don't understand. I have a link here about this Jewish woman attends firearms training after a rise in anti-Semitism. Now, she says, people don't seem to want us around. Do you know that just a few years ago, I was talking to some Jews from Israel, and I'm strong Second Amendment, gun carrying, gun carrying, and thanking God we have our Second Amendment rights here in America. And they were mocking me, saying, "You Americans and your guns, man! You just always love guns. We don't need, we don't use guns here in Israel." Ha! I I couldn't believe it. They're now issuing sixty some thousand firearms, AR-15s. Come on, get them, Israelis. Line up. Israelis are lining up trying to figure out how to shoot a gun. Separate note, separate day. I have a whole link on that. Jesus said, go sell your cloak and buy a sword. Yeah. But that's terrible fear that the Jews are living under. 
So this Adams doesn't bring this up. He only makes it look like we only see one side of the coin. Yeah, Israel is treating their bad, bad people. I'm talking the state of Israel, the Zionists. They're quite evil people. They really are. Uh, I'm going to talk about that later, how the Rothschilds, the evil Luciferian elite Rothschilds with their trillions of dollars in wealth, God used that to get Israel back on the map. Okay, number two, the most significance um, that I find with Adams and his heir, I have a problem with him. So in other words, he doesn't show the other side of the coin. He only explains one side of it. And, and the side he explains, he's spot on accurate. But number two, I find this the most significance in his, his shortfall, his shortcoming. He is striving unlawfully using his pulpit for politics while negating the spiritual issues here. He needs to be sticking strictly to the script. That's the word of God. I never heard him really. Did you hear, did you hear this Baptist boy using much scripture? Not really. He didn't, except he beat up on the Schofield Bible, I, and he's right about a lot of that. And in all fairness to Adams, though, he is absolutely correct about how Israel cares nothing about Jesus Christ or the Bible. That's a fact. I mean, you want to go to Israel and start preaching the gospel, you're going to get your visa yanked and even go on a, de a detaining cell, a holding cell like this one brother in Christ gave his testimony of how he was kept for, I think, two days in a retaining cell and, and really roughed up by some Zionist goons before they'd sent him back. The uh, And he did. He did bring that up, that it's an important point about misleading the evangelical stemming in part he should have said in part from the Schofield Bible. Now, on the Schofield Bible, yes, there is a terrible error in the Schofield Bible. Now, I don't have a problem with a Schofield Bible if it's King James, but guess what? When I'm saying he took, let's say he took the standard King James 6, uh, 1769, I don't have a problem with that. But what this reprobate bad boy Schofield did is the boy got in there and started adding what? References. Anytime you get a hold of a reference Bible, be very, very wary. I do have in my library, I have four or five different King James Bibles, uh, reference Bibles. I have the 1611 original and the 1769. But now let me tell you this. I do have a reference King James. And it's from, I want to say, I keep wanting to say it's the uh, Thomas, hold on, it, it's the uh, uh, from uh, the, yeah, Barber Bibles, and it has, it's a reference Bible. 70%, no, no, let's be honest, 80% of their commentary is questionable, about 20% is garbage. What I do love about a reference Bible is a tool. It really sets me in the context of where I'm studying quickly. Now, the history and the context and all the players, they lay out very well. But, man, when they start putting in their philosophical jargon, I'm like, no thanks. And this is where Schofield went wrong. Primarily the most evil part that Schofield did is teaching that the literal Jewish kingdom, that means only Jews for the last of the millennial reign, right? And that this is like national Israel is one and the same as what? The Jewish kingdom that God's going to establish in the millennial kingdom. And that's not biblical at all. That's not Israel. See, obviously, Schofield and later Moody had no idea what Israel or who Israel truly, truly is. Uh, let's see. You can read about it more. I have it in my notes here. 
But th- this is what <coughs> this is what Adams should be teaching. This is all. Everything that's happening right now is God's plan. Yes, God used the Luciferian elite Rothschild's immense wealth. Why? Because he needed to gather Israel back together as a nation to prepare them for the time of Jacob's trouble, or Daniel's 70th week, known as the tribulation. Now, God has his prophetic timepiece and his purpose to bring before true Israel, which is us, the church people, the Jewish remnant, the tribulation saints, and the Old Testament saints, before we can all come to what? The marriage supper of the Lamb and consummate our marriage to our Lord Jesus Christ. (coughs) Excuse me. Until that happens, he has to deal with unrepentant, stiff-necked Israel right now. Yeah. So, Of course, we don't like what we see by these wicked reprobate Zionists. I mean, I have to bite my, I have to clench my, every time I hear Netanyahu start quoting Bible scripture, I think that that reprobate, uh, no, I know that reprobate thinks he knows that evangelical Christians are stupid, useful idiots. And same with Amir Tzvati when he told those young Christians, stop saying Christian, don't say that. Yeah, until I caught the little weasel, and then he went back and scrubbed his videos. Uh, That's why you got uh, Joel Rosenberg, a great genius of a writer, spends 15 hours out of every day writing on how the Zionist machinery is really God's work. God's work. Now, wait a minute. Now, when I say God's work, God's work in how we must love and support Israel. He's talking national Israel, y'all. And how we must love the Abrahamic peace accords. Yeah, yeah. So God's using this. Praise God. You, He should be talking about the shock and awe of the book of Hebrews. This is what he should be teaching. Read my study on how Paul, yes, Paul wrote Hebrews. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, read my study. See, this Adams, this Baptist boy, pounding his pulpit, using it as a political stump on geopolitical manners and measures and, and, and situations, should be preaching the word of God like I did, giving the gospel, which I did, and then talking about all of this mass spiritually to strive lawfully. Study, Paul, study the book of Hebrews know what doctrine is. The Baptist boy, Adams, is so far from doctrine. He's got his own agenda, y'all. Baptist, hey man, you can hear the Baptist boys. See, why I get fired up about Baptist boys? When I nailed that young, misguided lad, the Korean kid from Berkeley with a PhD, who was lying through his teeth, lie after lie, and I caught him. And he was trying to tell us that the King J, that there's no, that the 501c3 system is not bad, that it's all part, that it's good, it's ordained, it's, it's, God is, it's all God. No. Anyway, and I caught him. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that. So anyway, I called him out and asked him to answer my five page letter. Well, he didn't, but his Baptist boy, one of his boys that sits there on their videos and going, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man, brother. Well, one of them wrote me an email saying that I needed my ass kicked. Yeah, there you go. So these Baptist boys, they just don't want to talk about doctrine. They want to get up there. And, you know, and even this Calvary Chapel guy, all these evangelicals and these NAR, all of them, they're all come out from among them. You know, J.D. Farag, of course, he's a good chameleon. He'll switch and jump back and forth. Uh, J.D. Farag out there in Hawaii was pounding the pulpit. I haven't recorded people. I'm not making this up. Pounding his pulpit for Trump. Vote Trump. Vote Trump. And then when all that mess blew up, he quickly dodged. We don't do politics. Same with Meritus Fadi. Oh, uh, no, a Christian doesn't get involved in politics. But he was. But they just jump back and forth. They're chameleons. 
But what the Baptist boy in his video, he needs to be talking about doctrine. He should be telling people about when Haggai, like correction, Hagar, I'm sorry, I have to correct that spelling. When Hagar met Jesus Christ in the wilderness. Now, if you open your Bible to Genesis chapter 16 and Genesis chapter 17, this, if you'll remember, the horrible mess when Sarah and Abraham lost faith in the promise given to them, the child of promise, and Sarah, like a complete moron, tells Abraham at the time his name was Abram, uh, yeah, take our take the servant girl, the Egyptian, and there you can we'll have our heir. And now go with me to Genesis quickly, Genesis chapter seventeen here. Uh, correction, 16, 16. And what happened in the story we know from 15 is when Hagar became pregnant, she got an attitude, and the mistress of the house, Sarah, booted her out. She told Abraham, get her out, throw her out. Believe it or not, Abraham threw Hagar and her uh, pregnant, being pregnant with Ishmael, out the door. Kicked him out. This Baptist boy needs to be talking. Now, what does this have to do with Israel and the Palestinians? Well, Ishmael was the father of the Arabs, of the Arab nations. Yes, they have the Arabs, and mostly Muslim today. Muslims have Abraham as their father. So do the Jews. They claim Abraham as their father. So do we, the Christians, call Abraham our father, as it's in my studies. This is all news to you. So go with me to Genesis chapter 16. So Hagar, she was kicked out, and now she is in a very, very bad way. So she, uh, verse 3, Sarah's Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dealt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. And then it went on. As she conceived, she saw that she had conceived. Her mistress was despised in her eyes. So Sarah said to Abraham, my wrong be upon thee. Yeah, no kidding. That's what happens when you have a wife that is not obedient to God and not obedient to her husband and is running things around the house, right? I've given my maid and to thy bosom, oh snap, that wasn't smart. And when she, who, but who was really stupid here? Who was really stupid? Was it Sarah or Abraham? Same with Adam and Eve. Adam said, I didn't do it. She's the one that made me do it. No, the one who was really stupid was Adam. And the one who's really stupid was Abraham. So she said to Abraham, my wrong, my bad, I messed up. So kick her out. So Abraham said, Behold, thy maid is of thy hand, do her as thou pleasest. And when Sarah dealt sure, sure, uh, heartily with her, she fled from her face. Abraham wasn't even man enough to fix the situation. He just backs down, cowers down, a very weak man, spineless. And to give you an idea how spineless Abraham was, the guy was going to have the Pharaoh of Egypt take Sarah, his wife, said it was my sister because he was terrified he might be killed. A different story for a different day. So poor Hagar. She's in the desert. She's out in the wilderness, and she finds a oasis we see in verse 7. If you can go to 16, verse 7, and who does she meet? The angel of the Lord. Now, there are about five occurrences when the angel of, which means the same as the Lord. Now, be very, very careful with this. We see is what theologians call a Christophany or a theophany, meaning an appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. I don't want to go into that detail now. But I have two huge studies. It's called Come Meet My Kinsman Redeemer. See, Jesus Christ, there's not this thing with called a pre-incarnate Jesus. No, pre-incarnate literally means before he was a person. 
Jesus Christ has always been a person. He's always been a body walking around. He's God in what is a person. But when he became in the flesh and scripture was when he brought was brought forth from the womb of Mary as the babe born in the manger. I'm not going to get off on all these subjects, but read and study. Commit, come and meet my kinsman redeemer, Jesus Christ, and his appearances to man in the Old Testament. I kind of feel like I want to kind of read over these now, but uh, for time's sake, please study that. Email me if you have questions. So what this Baptist boy needs to be talking about, oh, these terrible evil Zionists. Well, let's get in scripture. Let's strive lawfully. Let's tell people what's going on here. Hey, the, the, the Arabs who the Zionists are treating worse than dirt, and it's genocide now, the way they're going. They're, they're what, 10,000, 12,000 now? Innocent, supposedly most, I would say, Palestinians are being slaughtered. You see what Israel wants to do, right? The Zionists want to completely, they want to go from river to sea and clean out every one of them. The ones that survived, they want to ship them off to England, the American. Someone else taken, but we want to make this all not a nice Jewish state. It belongs to us. We're going to establish God's kingdom here. Yeah. Wrong. No, no, no. The two-state solution, it doesn't matter, people. As long as Israel has a piece of what they're living in, it, whatever the land is, all they are doing now is occupying space as tenants until Jesus Christ comes and lays down the real property that belongs to Israel, the true Israel. So why this story about Hagar? Well, he needs to talk about how Hagar met Jesus. What did Jesus do? He met Hagar. What are you doing out here? She said, I got kicked out. And Jesus said, yeah, I kind of don't understand what's going on. Guess what Jesus did? And you don't believe this was Jesus? Read carefully. I'm not going to go through it with you. Read carefully Genesis chapter 16. Hagar knew it was God. She quoted, whom God whom I've met. And Jesus Christ literally tells Hagar, go back to Abraham. He sent her back. And then Jesus later in Genesis chapter 17 tells uh, Abraham, look, dummy, she's coming back. The child will be born. His name will be Ishmael, and Ishmael will be the father of princes and be a great nation. And oh, by the way, she's back in your household, meaning and you know, under your cover. What does this mean for today? The Zionist state has an obligation not to go slaughter and oh, they 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 honestly look at Arabs as non. It's worse than apartheid. They don't even look at him as human. It's horrific. But because the Zionist propaganda and machinery has evangelicals and congressmen paid into their pocket and controlled and with the media and on and on and on, they have people believing that, no, they're those evil, evil Arabs. They must all be die. They must all die. Kill them all for Jesus. Amen. Lie, that's a lie from hell. Do you realize how many Arabs are Christian? How even the Muslims. Muslims are devout. They love, they love the connection to Abraham. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, we don't know how many of them will come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's not our job to pick out that one, this one, this one. But Israel is obligated to not destroy Ishmael. But you don't hear this behind these evangelical uh, pulpits, a correction. You don't even hear, correction, you don't even hear this behind evangelical pulpits. You just hear Israel, 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 like this reprobate from hell, John Hagee, who's saying they're on a different program, we have to worship them. He basically wants us to worship the Zionists. And Hagee's going straight to hell. Oh, Hagee's going to hell. 
So you don't even hear, why didn't this Baptist boy talk about this? He's only saying, yeah, the evil Zionist. Well, yeah, he's right. And they, the, the Palestinians have a case. They're being treated worse than dirt. And that's why you see this radical treatment. But he should say that Israel is obligated to care for the neighbor. And they can say, yeah, but they're trying to kill us. Well, there are ways that you, if you take care of people that will not breed such hatred, when you have people that can't get a job, when you have people that are locked up and treated like animals, this is where the uh, traditional fundamentalist breeds. And I'm not going to get into the politics of it. Just let's talk about Ishmael and Isaac. In that vein, though, Ishmael is what the child of flesh Isaac is a child of promise now the ultimate what this the Baptist did not talk about why did Jesus send Hagar and Ishmael back yet why because the ultimate body of Christ is Israel not DNA Listen, you proud Jew, you say my mama got DNA, a Jew, man. No, 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 no. Who ca- we couldn't care less. God could not care less because we have the word of God as written in Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please read, as I said, come meet my kinsman redeemer. Read Melchizedek, my kinsman redeemer. Read and study, behold, the Lamb of God. Do you know him? Read and study the man Christ Jesus. The perverted Bible say, oh, Jesus was a human when he walked the earth. That's a lie from hell. No, Jesus was not human. He was a man. Read uh, my study on this true. Who is? What is true Israel? I have a video in his blog on it. The state of Israel. They're the tenants over the land that belongs to true Israel. This is what that Baptist boy needs to be teaching and preaching. Finally, that Baptist boy needs to be teaching and preaching. Pray like Paul that Israel be saved. It is written in Romans chapter 10, one brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Maranatha. The closing comment, the transcript is here in the notes. I urge you to read and study it. Questions, email me. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.